What is up everybody? Emily here with Travel and Ledger and today I am inspiring you to end the year strong. We still have two months left. There's plenty of time to travel, to motivate yourself, to get everything done that you want to do in 2021 and we are going to make it happen. If you haven't watched it already, check out this video about how to make an end of the year vision board. But otherwise, today I am talking about motivational books that are going to get you up off your butt and make sure that you end the year strong. There's a lot of reading for this one because, you know, it's book related. So uh, I have my computer here if you're wondering what I'm looking at when I keep looking down, but I want to get these quotes right. So these particular books that I chose, I really like because a lot of the main characters of the books went through a struggle before they were able to become successful. So in no particular order, I'm going to go ahead and dive right in. All these books have definitely inspired me over the years. Some of them I wish I could read for the first time again. You know how it is when you already know what's gonna happen so you skim through, but when I reread stuff, I wish I was like reading it fresh for the first time because I love that moment where I just learned so much information from like one or two lines. Uh, one of those books that I can read over and over again and I always read something new is Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. It's a really good book and it's actually written by a con man. I don't think many people know that. This book is basically a collection of everything he learned from all these rich people that he would kind of snake into their inner circles and he would get all of their tips and he would also try to make money off them who conned the rich to tell them how to get rich and then he made a book out of it and he actually got rich by making the book. So everything in there is just solid information. But it is one of those books that kind of reads like a reference novel, like every line has so much in it. It's almost like a Bible if you really look into the line. So make sure you take your time with this book, read it slow. As Napoleon Hill went as far as to label himself the creator of the self-help genre book. So that's the kind of guy this was. He was just really hustling and trying to make that money and make a name for himself, make a brand for himself, and he did. And this was back in 1937. So it's not like he had all the internet and everything. He really like made himself rich just from the hustle alone and networking and just surrounding himself with rich people, basically. For every book, I'm going to give you my favorite quote and then one of the tips that still rings true today. So my favorite quote from this book is, your own success or failure is based largely on your self-belief and a mindset of positive expectancy is the foundation of which your success can be achieved. Napoleon Hill. Again, see, that's just a perfect example of how these sentences are in this book. It's just wealth of information in one sentence. Something that you can learn from this book to end the year strong and start the new year off, right? Do you really need that fancy, shiny thing? Like, do you really need a new phone when you just got one two years ago? Like, and there's nothing wrong with the one that you have. Are you just feeding into that marketing hook? Like he talks all about the different hooks that people use to just like latch onto you to get you, especially during the holiday season. So are, do you really need that or are you just feeding into the marketing and don't feed into it, don't let them get you, don't let these con men take advantage of you. The next book that I stumbled upon that I have like loved since the moment that I picked it up is Do You by Russell Simmons. If you guys don't know who Russell Simmons is, he's basically the CEO of hip hop. He kind of created this huge brand around hip hop and he was one of the first people to do that. He actually made like a whole empire on top of his name. He had a clothing line. He had all sorts of stuff going for him. So this dude is a hustler. He hustles hard and his book is all about how you can hustle and make things happen for yourself. He struggled hard. He was from the street streets. Like he was in gangs, selling drugs, all that stuff. But he had a moment of clarity and he turned his life around because he heard this artist who was singing hip hop and it caused him to just get involved in the hip hop world and he just blew up from there. In this book, I really like how he breaks it down for you. He has 12 laws that he says are the 12 laws of success. And the main thing about it is to do you. And you know, like he says, you need to hustle. Nobody's going to do the work for you. You need to put in that work. So he even says, uh, for example, there's this gentleman who asked him for change when he was on the street and he didn't give him any change. And the, and the guy was like, what, you're some big celebrity, you're not gonna give me any change. And he told the guy, he's like, listen, if you wanna make money, start sweeping the streets. Like, just start showing your work ethic. Next thing you know, the shop owner in front is going to realize you're like shoveling the snow from their driveway, you're sweeping the street for them, and they're gonna offer you a position. They might offer you work. 
or you might get hired by that whole street. Just keep the street clean for all those stores. You never know where opportunity is going to knock, but somebody is going to see your work ethic if you just get out there and work. My favorite quote from this book is, certainly any job is better than sitting at home, eating Twinkies and watching TV. Any job is better than depending on the government for a handout. Any job is better than sitting on your stoop, smoking a blunt and talking about what you're going to do. So don't just talk about it, do it and do you. Everywhere is also gonna start hiring here, like especially for holiday work. So if you're looking to jump into that career that you've always been too scared to jump into, now is the time because these positions are available. Like get in there first, get in there before everybody else starts getting back to work. Just get in there and do you. Here's another one who is kind of a con man, but I don't think the people realize it. Rich dad, poor dad, yeah. The way that he got rich is actually from becoming a motivational speaker and he became a motivational speaker with the help of writing this book. So there's a lot of speculation that maybe he never actually had a rich dad or a poor dad and that he was trying to teach people about the difference between a rich mindset and a poverty mindset. There's a lot of controversy surrounding him, but we just know him as rich dad, poor dad. But that being said, this motivational stuff really worked for him. And it is true that certain people are born into a certain mindset. Some people have a privileged mindset because they have a lot of mentors around them and people that are lifting them up or they've already given them the silver spoon in their mouth. While other people are born into that poverty mindset where this is how it is, this is always how it's going to be and it's, nothing's gonna change. So it's really interesting to see the two differences in the book. One of his main points that really hit home with me was that, you know, we play with this play money, but we don't really know what to do with the money. Where rich are already taught, they know how to make the money work for them. So they're constantly investing in things, they're putting their money in places, they never just have their money sitting around. Unlike that poverty mindset where you're just trying to pile up a bunch of money and just like keep it all in a bag and you know, hide this big bag of wealth. You don't realize that your money could be making you money. So in this day and age, we have things like Robinhood or crypto.com. You know, there's so many ways that you can invest right now. You don't have to buy a whole stock. You can buy a percentage of a stock or a percentage of cryptocurrency. These things are moving and it's making people money. NFTs, like there's, we're living in this digital age where there's so many things that are possible to do. So make sure you take advantage of that sort of stuff going on. I'll leave some link below of some of the stuff that I use, but make sure you take advantage and you're really making your money work for you. My favorite quote from the book is, so many people say, oh, I'm not interested in money, yet they'll work at a job for like eight hours a day. Make that money work for you. The next book I have up is my book, Comfort Zone Correction, where I write about my mentor. One of the things he did when he first came to America was he used to go to Grand Central Station from Connecticut. He would train into the city and he would go to Rockefeller Center and he would go into one of the payphone booths with a roll of dimes in his pocket, about $5 worth of dimes, and he would just make cold calls. And those days, every call was 10 cents. So he would make cold calls all day. People would say, I wanted to call you back. And he would say, no, sir, let me call you. When's a great time? Because he didn't have an office. He didn't have anything. He was just there hustling from day one and trying to make stuff happen. And that's why I had to write this book about him because he's such an out of the box thinker. I just had to write it all down. So one of my favorite quotes from the book is no sale is too small. Give every person your undivided attention as if they were a million dollar client. One of the main things that I learned from this book was you never know who knows who, you never know how networking is gonna go. And even if a client just buys one thing, they might end up buying 100 next season, 300 next season. You're growing, they're growing, the possibilities are endless. So you never know who they're going to connect you to. Don't assume that one sale is just one sale. Always think of the possibility for the future and don't just harp on one sale at a time because you never know where that sale could lead you in the future. Next book we have up is The Five Second Rule from Mel Robbins. This is a game changer, guys. Like there's this thing in our psyche that we just wanna procrastinate all the time. And she goes into it and she's like, dude, all you gotta do is count to five. You have to do it, you have five seconds. When you have that moment of urge to do something, you have to get up and do it within five seconds or else it's not going to get done. And this has helped me so much. I am a procrastinator. So, you know, you just need that excuse to get up and do it. And in your mind, it's kind of a challenge to yourself because you do a countdown like five, four, three, two, like 
I gotta get up before one. And it really works. And Mel was actually 41 years old and she was in a crumbling marriage. She was just in this downward spiral and she just started being proactive. She started doing stuff. She did the five second rule. She just started making things happen. And that's how she got out of her slump. And this is how you could get out of your slump too. I know, especially November, December, January, we're like, oh, it's the holiday season. So it's just gonna fly by anyway. But you don't realize that we could get so much done and this is the prime time to make money. Everybody's buying right now. So just get out there and really try to make your profits right now. Don't be lazy. I know Christmas is coming and Santa is on the way already, but you know, you could be making this profit that is going to last you for all of 2022. And my favorite quote from this book is, if you have an impulse to act on a goal, you must physically move within five seconds or your brain will kill the idea. So five, four, three, to, are you going? Are you going? You guys probably already know this book with Marie Kondo, but this is another good one, guys. The tidying up who knew that it can make the rest of your day so productive. My favorite quote from this book is, visible mess helps distract us from the true source of the disorder. Powerful, powerful words. And it's really interesting with her because her main struggle actually came after success because she is such a perfectionist. She had a hard time moving forward in her business because she was so like micro sensitive and wasn't thinking forward. She was just wrapped up in that moment of perfectionism. Just tidy up your life. Don't be a perfectionist. Just like do the best that you can and the best that you can is good enough. And the main message that I learned from this book is it is okay to let it go. You don't have to hang on to all this stuff. And it's the same if you turn it into your thought process as to maybe you're hung up on this bad relationship or this bad friendship. It's okay to let it go. And next year you can start fresh, new friend group, tidy it up, tidy up your life, and you'll feel so much better. All right, this next one you guys are gonna be like, you, Emily, you're crazy, why are you reading this book? But Men Are From Mars, Girls Are From Venus was a great read for me. As you guys know, I love psychology. And it really is important to know that, you know, women and men are fundamentally different. And these are the reasons and men think this way and girls think this way. And if you try to get the other two to think like the other, it never works. Like if you're in a relationship, you already know this, but this book really goes into the fundamental differences and will really help you in an argument or a disagreement and just help you see things from the other sex's perspective. So I really enjoyed that about this because it's not only just for relationships and dating, but it's also when you go into the workplace or friendships, it kind of explains a lot why things happen how they do. So my favorite quote from this book is, we mistakenly assume that if our partners love us, they will react and behave in certain ways and the ways we react and behave when we love someone. But it's like, how are they gonna know how you want them to act if you don't tell them? So we kind of put these assumptions on the other sex. And one of his biggest hardships was that even though he was one of the most successful self-help relationship counselors that was out there, his own marriage just couldn't stay together. This next one is a really big one. It's actually so big that it's banned from jails. Isn't that crazy? It's called the 48 Laws of Power. And he just goes into all the things that can make you more powerful as an individual. His biggest struggle actually came after he published his book. He had a big stroke to the point that he had to learn how to walk again, how to hike again. He had a lot of issues that he's been able to work through, but it just reminds you that your life could end at any time. And it's really important to get the most out of every moment you have while you have it. What I really liked about the book is that it gives you kind of an insight to the human psyche and why you see these leaders rise in power very quickly, or even how these leaders are able to form a group around them. It's really interesting how people will follow you so easily. And it's very important at the same time to maintain your power around management and all that stuff. And the easiest way to do it is to let the management think that they have their power. So it's a lot of little interesting things like that. You don't think of like, wow, what is it about that person that makes them such a solid leader? And this really breaks it down into how you can be a better leader and a better follower and how you can play both sides of the power to give somebody power and get something out of it or to release power and get something out of it or for you to have the power and get something out of it. And one of my favorite quotes from this book is do not build a fortress to protect yourself because isolation 
is dangerous. This next one is great. It's actually based off of a podcast called The School of Greatness. And it kind of goes into all these different celebrities and athletes and all these different people and how they were able to reach success, their different success tactics. So you really get to see how many people in the world are different, but we all come together and can reach the same success but it's everybody has their own pathway to do it. Even Lewis himself, he was en route to be like a huge football star, but he had a really bad injury and it just like tackled him. And then he went into a really bad depression and this podcast was actually something that helped him get out of his rut. And then it turned into a book. So it's really interesting how the course of your life steers you. So even if you're going through some hardships right now, just know that no matter what hardship you go through, it can only make you stronger. And once you get over that hurdle, the next hurdle is gonna be even easier to get over. And that leads me to my favorite quote from this book, sacrifice in some form will be a necessary part of the process and whoever is more willing to sacrifice for the hustle will always succeed in the long run. The last book I wanna talk about today is Taking Lead Lessons from a Life in Motion by Derek Huff. I love Derek Huff, he's a great positive person and he's always putting out positivity and I love his Instagram, YouTube, everything. Anyways, my favorite quote is, the superior human being will always see the light in someone and choose to encourage that light instead of dimming it. And this is huge. Like think of how many haters there are, even you personally as a creator, if you're out there putting out content, there's haters. And why are they hating on you? Because they can't shine as bright as you can. And if you realize that from the beginning, it'll help you to be able to deal with them better. And even though Derek went through a lot of things that could have made him a sour person, really like pushed him down to not be positive, he always stayed positive and he pushed through it and he always reached up the ladder to make himself better and challenge himself even more. And that's why he is one of the greatest dancers out there right now. And one of the things he gave up was his childhood. And that was one of the struggles that he had because he always was practicing, he was always perfecting his craft and doing all this stuff. So even though he sacrificed that from the beginning and he lived away from his family forever, it all worked out. He says that because of all that, that actually has made him the artist he is today. So everything that happens to you in life will build your character and create the person that you are today. So always keep that in mind, no matter what you're going through, no matter how hard your struggle is, there's always a light on the other side and try to spin that positive mindset onto it. Especially going into the new year, you can totally use this. Just put positive spins on everything, no matter what you're doing. Think bigger and better. Think of better vacations you can be doing, better travel you could be doing, and it'll make next year even greater for you. I think you have plenty of time to get these reads in by the time the end of the year comes and get those goals that you set out for 2021 finished. Like how many could you have left? Did you do any of them? How many of them did you do? I have about three left that I'm trying to do. One of them is to reach a thousand subscribers on YouTube. If you could help me out, that would be great. But I wanna hear what your goals are. What can we do to make them happen? Which one of these books is gonna get you to the end? Which one is gonna get you to that light at the end of the tunnel? Let me know guys in the comments below and I will see you in the next video.